Hey, thanks for checking out Racket Stringing Tips today. We are going to go over 40 racket stringing tips. That's right, 40. Uh, the first few are around inspecting the racket. And so some of these are going to be familiar to you. But hopefully at the end of these 40 tips, you're going to walk away with a couple things that, that are helpful to you. And please make sure that you uh, leave a comment. And if you have a tip that I didn't go over, please let me inspect the racket. Number one, let's look for the grommet and the head guard wear. So you want to check that out, right? Um, I know this is a basic procedural thing, but sometimes we forget that. Um, look at where the grommets touch the string. That's number two. Are there any cracks, broken, or is it worn? And this is really important because um, you're going to want to have that taken care of before you restring the racket. So if you have to replace the grommets or if you have to... Uh, you know, grind out a grommet and put a new one in there or use tubing, whichever, right? Inspect the frame for cracks or stress fractures. Sometimes you can see that when the racket is still strung, sometimes because you can see where there's stress on it. Many times when you're cutting out the string, sometimes you're not going to always see that stress fracture. So kind of look at that before you cut out the string, see if you, there's anything and kind of note where that's at. And is there anything that needs to be taken care of there? Number five, place plastic over the existing grip, secure it with a rubber band. I like to do this so that it not only keeps the germs away from you, but it also keeps the grip looking the exact same way um, when you are done stringing it. You know, sometimes later on if you end up like stenciling the racket and then, you know, you might accidentally get a little bit of ink or something on it. This way that kind of eliminates that problem. So you just cut a little piece of plastic, wrap it around the grip, put a rubber band, that secures it. And also we're going to use that for something else later, but I'll get into that. If a string dampener is in the strings, place it under that rubber band. That's one thing you can do with that. So with the dampeners, when I take them off, keep them on the racket, put them under that rubber band that you just secured around the grip. The reason is so that it doesn't get lost in your, in your stringing tray, in your machine tray. Or you, know, you put it somewhere and then later on you're done, half an hour you're done stringing, and then you totally forgot about that. I don't know if you've done that before. I've done that many times. Number six, if a string dampener, uh, okay, that was number six, sorry. Number seven, inspect um, where the knots are. So kind of have an idea where you're going to be tying off. And if it's a one, you know, um, if you're not too familiar with the frame, kind of that way you know on a one piece where those holes should be on a two piece, you know, kind of look where that's at. And that kind of go, get, brings you into the uh, another one here. Um, uh, let's see, cut out the strings using the proper method. Okay, make sure that you cut out the strings so that you don't have as much, um, uh, to uh, that you're not creating too much stress on the racket. Because if you're all cutting in one side, then it's gonna create more stress on the other part of the racket. So, you know, start at the middle and work your way out evenly. Number nine, clean off any residue on the frame. You know, sometimes I'll have a little bit of like rubbing alcohol in a, in, a, in a smooth cloth and I'll just put a little bit on there and just kind of rub around and get gets any residue, any, you know, wear marks, anything like that. Because you want to leave, you know, you want to give the racket back better than you got it, right? People appreciate you cleaning the racket. Okay, the next few are over, uh, string tips are based on mounting the frame. Okay, just some real basic things here. Carefully secure the frame, make sure it's not too tight, too loose. If it's too loose, you can potentially damage the frame when you start pulling pulling tension on some of the strings. And make sure you have a protective surface between the, the machine and the racket. Sometimes you might just have a piece of hard plastic between there or, or nothing. And so you wanna make sure you, you know, either a little piece of leather or um, you, know, you can create some other kind of little pad that you can put between that because ultimately when you're securing that, sometimes it leaves a little mark. So you wanna make sure you don't scratch the frame. Somebody has a new frame, they're gonna notice you know, that there's a little uh, mark on there pretty easily. Keep the butt cap logo facing up. Whenever I string a racket, I always make sure that the butt cap is facing up. That way, um, I'm always stringing the racket the same way because I'll do the short side on one side, I'll do the long side on another. That way I keep that consistency and then I don't have to worry about when the racket comes in again, you know, about stringing on the opposite side so forth. Always keep the butt cap up. Always make sure that you string short side on one and the long side on the other. Obviously, if you're doing a two-piece, that's different. But again, it'll create that consistency and the knots will always be up on the same way. Um, next thing, clamps. Make sure that the clamps are clean uh, and any residue off of them from any previous stringings. Many of the synthetics and, and multi-filaments have, have some residue on there and sometimes a little bit oily or whatever the case may be. And then you come to a new set of strings and you know, especially if it's like gut or something else and then you know the first pull, boom, you just ruined your string because you, you, um, 
it slipped through there. So make sure that you get this all taken care of ahead of time. You know, a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Um, you know, there's other other materials you can use as well, and a little toothbrush, and then you can clean out um, any of that that residue and let that dry. Uh, what's another one? Adjust the clamps and, um, to the string gauge if needed. So if you just strung with a 15 light and now you're going to a 17 gauge, you know, keep that aware kind of that you might have to make a little bit of adjustment. So I'll take the string, put it through there, kind of carefully clamp it just to make sure that it is um, properly uh, adjusted. Keep the, clamp, um, keep the clamp bases clean and wax the bases for easy sliding of the bar. So if you've got um, this obviously doesn't apply if you have floating clamps, right? But if you have um, uh, clamps that are on, on either a bar or uh, the traditional, you know, um, gliding clamps, sliding clamps, you know, sometimes that saves you time when you can easily slide them and turn them around and move them back and forth because when, sometimes when they stick and you have to, like, move them and, and you have to keep, you know, fidgeting with them, uh, that takes extra time and um, so forth. So make sure that you have them nicely gliding. Usually, I'll have like a little wax bar that uh, a little wax stick that I'll I'll put on the on the glide um, bars, and then I'll clean that off the residue off, and then they, they they're nice and smooth. Um, use a starting clamp before your machine clamp to secure the mains before pulling your first string. Okay, this el eliminates any kind of slippage. So when you're using your clamps. Um, you're going to put a starting clamp behind it so that way when you pull the string if by chance there was a little bit of slippage possibly going through your regular clamp the um, the starting clamp will stop it before it has a chance to slip okay so that's that's uh, uh, the last one under clamps okay so now when you're actually stringing the racket have your tools out clean and ready to go make sure you have everything there that'll save time next one clamp each string near the frame and the grommets okay that also creates uh, a better us because many times if you have you know half an inch or an inch between the clamp and the frame later on when you pull that next string around um, there's a potential where you could lose a little bit of tension in your racket uh, stringing so make sure you get as close to the clamps as you uh, close to the grommets as you can when you're clamping okay and on the uh, inside of the frame use um, so you know measure the short side before securing the first string um, some of these, I'm not going to really go into specifics, I'll do that in a further video, but um, just for the sake of time. Next one, when pulling strings through holes already occupied, be careful not to burn the string. So, you know, you can create a lot of friction that way. So be careful not to damage the other string. So what you do is you can put a little bit of, put them in a little bit of uh, a little wax on there or something, or just pull it through very slowly because it, you'd be surprised how quickly you could start causing um, some heat in there and, uh, and, and, and causing premature damage to it. When you tie off with hybrids, tie off on the same type of string. Enlarge the holes as needed. So if you um, know that you're using a hybrid, two different kinds of string, um, sometimes if you um, have like a synthetic and, and you're tying off on a polyester, you've got a lot of movement going on. So try to tie off on the same type of string. So in that case, you're going to have to create um, a bigger hole in, the, in, in one of your other um, uh, inlets, so you want to do that before you actually start stringing, right? Because you're not going to want to stick it all through there and, adjust, and make the hole bigger when you are when you already have a string in there. Okay, but I'll get into that on um, on another on another video. So uh, make sure you cut a sharp tip at the end of your string before installing strings. This creates a lot of um, that way you don't have the headache later on if it was trying to push that string through when there's a little bit of uh, resistance and so forth. So if you have a nice sharp tip, it goes through there easy every time. Watch for crossovers on the outside of the frame. So if there's any opportunity where you're crossing over on the string, make sure that um, you know it's up above and it doesn't end up crossing over on the outside because that's sloppy and it doesn't look professional. Measure your string accurately and double check before pulling the first main. So what you can do is that way you don't have too much string and you're not pulling too much through the mains um, to burn more string. So what you'll do is you know you'll measure it initially, make sure that you have enough, and then as you start going down the racket. Um, before you have maybe five or six uh, crosses left, kind of measure those out and then cut whatever's um, left So you because you don't need that extra stuff. Should you think about pre-stretching, did you offer that? Many times I've seen, I've seen, um, you know, I've even uh, pre-stretched polyester strings. So anything from polyester, some of the multi-filaments that are really elastic like an NRG2 um, or even an NXT, you know, those you can pre-stretch. 
um, even even some of the polys, right? So, and of course the natural gut. So, um, do you want to pre-stretch ahead of time? Measure the string again with six. Okay, I measured that one already. Okay, watch out for the tough angles the string has to go through. So many times, if the string's going through really tough angles and it looks like the grommets might be causing, could create a, a potential problem, you can use some little uh, leather pads right on the outside or or tubing in the holes to to create um, a better passage so that the uh, the angles aren't quite so sharp. All right, next one. Re always weave one cross ahead and reduce the amount you rotate the racket on the machine. So make sure when you're, re you know, you're, you put you put the string through on a cross. Don't secure it. Put another one through. Then turn the racket. Then pull it. And just always do that. That way you don't have as many movements because every time you know you're making a movement, it's taking you a little bit extra time. And by uh, pre weaving the next one, um, it it makes it a little bit easier to install those strings. And then of course you're going to figure out the system for yourself. Some some people uh, push the string one way, other times people will pull the, the, the crosses towards them when they're, when they're stringing. Uh, we'll go over some of the different methods sometime on another video. Um, hold the end of the string or put it in the racket um, so that you don't always have to find the end of the string because I've seen many times you know you put put one through and then you're pulling and you've let go of the string now you got to find the end again and reel it back in do the same thing and that just takes a lot of extra time so the whole thing is you're trying to do this in a less amount of time than you did before trying to learn from you know getting quicker and this is you know some of these things are are, are, are time saving tips right pre weave the mains before pulling the first string I have some people say no that doesn't really matter really in the professionally when you're stringing at tournaments and so forth you're always going to pre weave the mains and you're going to already have them in there and then you're just going to pull them you're going to pull them move the racket pull them uh, it saves it, it believe me it saves time but hey you know uh, please share your experiences on that leave a comment okay uh, a couple more things tips um, on tying off use a secure knot that, and don't use the machine to pull the knot tight never use a machine to pull the knot number one you're pulling on the frame and then you're also pulling at angles that could potentially um, damage the string Use a starting clamp as a connector if your string is too short. Many times, you know, maybe you're like that short and you can't get the last string in the machine to pull the last main. You're going to use a starting clamp and then you're going to get another piece of string and then you're going to put that on one end and then you're going to kind of use that um, to give you a little bit extra uh, string so that you can, you can secure that last string. So I've had that happen many times. Um, and use a starting clamp to secure the tie off knot. Many times I'll use a starting clamp instead of another tool to like grab the string and then as I'm pulling because the starting clamp is not going to slip out of, out of, out of there. So, uh, last couple things um, post stringing tips. Educate your customer about new strings. Keep them safe from the elements. Make sure you tell your customer, hey, this is a new string job, especially if it's gut or something else with the elements. If it's cold climates, hot climates, you just got to make sure that you know they know, hey, you leave your uh, racket in your car, you're going to be prone to having uh, more sh tension loss a lot quicker. Discuss the string wear and breakage. You know, discuss what could potentially happy, happen if if you tend to um, shank the ball a lot and you hit corners a lot. You you could potentially get uh, a more premature breakage. Um, record all the stringing information on file as far as the date, string, string gauge. What kind of stringing machine did you use? Who was a stringer? What's the tension? What type of racket? If a player has more than one racket, you know, make sure that you have it numbered somehow so you know which of the rackets it was that you strung. Um, use a string tension meter to check your tension. Um, have a reference number. Write that down. It's a good way to, you know, um, add some added value. The customer comes, have them come back in a couple weeks, and you can check the tension and see what percentage that it's lost, right? Um, plan to follow up. Yeah. Um, let's see. Racket cleanup. Uh, yeah, I think I talked a little bit about that. What if the grommet strip strip is looking a little bit ugly? The head guard, right? You you know you can actually put something on like leather protect or like um, rubber protectant, like uh, like armor all kind of material, right? And you put a little bit of that on that. That would shine it right up. So those are some of the tips. I hope uh, you found something in there of value. Please make sure you uh, leave a comment if you have some additional tips. These are things that I learned over the years. Other people have shown me. I've read in uh, books as well, but I've used all of these things myself. So I hope that that was helpful. Hopefully you got at least one or two tips out of those 40 that I gave. Um, please watch for the follow-up videos where I go more specific into it. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day. Thanks.